Hey everybody, Box Milk coming at you again. I know I said in an earlier video I wasn't going to do the genetic videos until the spring or summertime, but I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, no, I should do it. Anyway, let's go into um, a couple things, alright? I'm going to go from, this is a hypo. He's 100% head sterling. You guys know this is a revolver. But there's a lot of confusion with the hypo gene out there. You hear stuff called orange tails, you hear stuff called salmons, you hear stuff called hypos. They're all the exact same snake. The original hypos, when they were first brought in from Panama, all hypos um, are originated from Panama, um, were called orange tails. And then once they bred those boas together, they realized, oh, we got something here. And so then it got changed to salmon. And then... The hypo, and then it got changed to hypo, which is just short for hypomyelinistic because it does um, reduce the black and stuff like that in it, um, pigmentations and, and stuff like that. So, in short, orange tail, salmon, hypo, they're all the same thing. Common, everybody just calls them hypos. They are a codona. So, if I breed this to um, any other animal, I'm going to get... Half hypos, half not. No, they would not be hit for hypo. Okay, they, it's either a hypo or it's not, right? There is a such thing called a super hypo, which I do have a possible super hypo female. Um, and how you get that is you breed a hypo to hypo. All the babies are going to come out hypo, but there are going to be a certain percentage that are going to be super hypos. There is no way to look at a hypo and say, oh, that's, a, that's definitely a super. You know, even though it may look like it's going to be a super, you have to prove it out. And how you do that is if you breed a hypo to a normal boa or something like that, and all the babies come out hypo, then you have a super. So if you buy an animal that's sold you as a super hypo, you know you're being taken. Because it should only be sold as a possible super hypo unless it's proven. I don't care what it looks like. I've seen some incredible hypos out there. That people said, oh, this is definitely for sure a super. Oh, yeah. Guess what? It wasn't. So don't be fooled. Okay, now I'm going to bring in uh, India. Uh, hand me Moon. Priest, take a uh, revolver, please. India, just here. Give me one moment. India, just go ahead and grab him off you. There you go. Thank you, sweetheart, for holding Moon. Um, This is Moon. Okay, this is an... Albino air best, but I'm not going to go into the air best gene right now. Okay, this is a call strain albino, and I'm not going to go into the other albino strains right now, and I'm not going to go into the paradigms and stuff like that. I'm just going to straight go from here to hypo to albino to sunglo. Okay, so that way I break it down a little bit simpler for you. These are called call line albinos. Now, the reason why they're called call line albinos is because Peter Call was the first guy to successfully breed them. He was not the first guy to have them. They actually came from a pet store. And this pet store owner had them for like 10 years or more. And could never get them to breed. The guy just had crappy luck getting bows to breed. He probably didn't know what he was doing. That and they were probably, you know, fresh imports. So it took him a long time to adjust to captivity and stuff like that. So... Long story short, Peter Cole got word of there was an albino in captivity along with, you know, some other ones. Um, and he ended up breeding them, putting them together, getting this to go. And, and, and he ended up getting the two albinos. I think they were both albinos. Um, getting them to breed finally. And that's how we got the call strain albinos. That's why they're called call strain albinos. And no, they're not compatible with the VPI gene the, the, or the sharp strain or the Boa Woman car Caramel, okay? Those are all three different, those are different strains of albinism, um, not compatible with the call strain. Um, they're just, none of them are compatible. So that's how you get the albino. Now, this is a recessive, okay? So if I breed this to a normal or to any other morph that isn't hit for albino, I'm gonna get all that, or say, to say I bred to an arabesque, I'm gonna get some air bass, some normals, all 100% hit for albino. Meaning as long as I breed that to another albino or another hit, 100% hit albino, I'll get albinos. So that's recessive. So we're dealing with a co-dominant and then recessive. Now, what happens when you put 
the co-dominant to the recessive, right? You, what you get is you get what I got here. And this is a call line, okay? Um, this is a call line, Sun Glow. This guy's name is Tang. He is absolutely beautiful. Got him from Bo Republic. Um, absolutely love this guy. He's got a, just a gorgeous, nice little tail. Now, the Sun Glows will be brighter than your average call. They're gonna, they're, they, they, the colors just pop on them longer. They have, they're just, they just pop a lot better. Now, how do I get this? Okay, so what happens is I have to have a hypo. I have to take a hypo, breed it to an albino. Then I get hypos that are 100% hit for albino or hypos that are hit for sun glow. Once I breed that hypo, 100% hit for albino or sun glow to another albino or to a hit uh, albino call strain, you end up with this. This is what happens when you have the hypo, which is the codominant gene, and the recessive gene showing up in, in the trait. So this is actually a two gene animal. It's a hypo and it's an albino. So that's what happened. This is a two gene animal. It took the right combinations. It took, I'm pretty sure you want to hand me these guys. So in order to get this, and I'm not talking, you know, other mutations or morphs, I have to breed, thank you. And these are all three males, by the way. Uh, the albinos are in shed. <laughs> um, I have to breed these two together and get hits and then breed, you know, either a baby back to the mom or, or whatever. And then you end up with one of these. All right. So that's how you get a sun glow. So you, you go from a hypo to an albino to a sun glow. And that's how you get a two gene. One gene codominant, one gene recessive. And then you got the two gene here. So then you got a recessive and a codominant together. So that is how I get that. Now, if I breed this to another, um, say I breed this to a, a, a hypo, 100% hit for um, call albino or sun glow, I have a chance of producing super sun glows. Now, I once again, if you get a super sun glow sold to you, this is a super sun glow, no, unless it's proven. Okay, unless it's proven, it's just a possible super sun glow. You know, and you'll get albino too, which is recessive. But if you, if it is, a, if it is, a, a, if it is, say your sun glow proves out to be a super sun glow, then you'll get all sun glows, which is really cool. Um, so definitely, I know it can be confusing with the names and and the call strain, you know. But just remember, call strain was first, and that's what you get here, and they're beautiful. Um. You know, and then you get you got your hypos, which are from Pan, originated from Panama. They were all called when they were first born. They were called the orange cells, and then from orange cells they were called sams, and then from sams it was just hypomyelinistic, shortened to hypo. Okay, and then from that you end up getting your sun glows. Now you can go on to do more genes, but that's just a run the mill, basic. Just you know, I'm not going to go into deep, deep. I'm I'm not going into deep, deep detail here because I want everybody to understand. You know, just basic genetics in, in what I'm dealing with here. You know, yeah, can I break it down on what paradigms are and stuff like that? Yes, but I don't want to get there yet. I want to build your knowledge up slowly so that way for a lot of you, begin, a lot of you guys that are experienced and have been doing this for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. For a lot of the beginners out there that might not know, this video is excellent for you. Just get a base knowledge of, of what's going on and what I'm talking about. So hopefully this video will help a lot of you guys out there, especially a lot of you beginners out there that are trying to figure out what's a call albino and what's a sun glow and what's a hypo. You know, hopefully that'll help you guys out big time. Where are you going, big boy? You know, and I absolutely love my my boas. You guys know that. I just, I adore them. I, I love my carpets, and but boas are my first passion, and I absolutely love them. And they're they're just my babies, and they're great. I can't wait to breed him this summer. He is definitely, and I'm going to go and make some uh, hits hits for Sterling's, but I'm, I'm going to probably breed him to my sharp strain albino, so that way I can eventually make sun glow Sterling's. You know, so that'll be cool. Um, but I'll do, once uh, Nirvana sheds out, I'll go into the sharp strain, 
and 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 stuff like that. But I just want to touch on this basic genetics of what you go from a hypo to an albino to a sunglow. And and Tang is over here trying to explore. So hopefully that helps you guys. Hopefully that helps you guys and and helps you get a better grasp of what's going on. Anyway, this is Box and Boa, Revolver, Tang, and Moon, Priest, and thank you, India and India. All saying thank you so much for watching. Please like, click, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, just please leave them down below. You know I will get back to you. Have a blessed and positive day because you guys know I will. This is Box and Boa saying peace. You guys are so cute.